have been noticing that there have been some live events. There, you know, there, there are a couple places around the country that have been doing live events. Uh, a lot of them have been taking the secure safety protocols very seriously. I just uh, don't particularly think doing a live doing live events is a good idea, especially indoors. I don't think it's a good idea. Outdoors is uh, a, a little bit of a different story, L- less moving pieces, so to speak. But um, you know, um, it it is it is a little. I think the indoor stuff is a little dangerous. But, and and let you know, I understand a lot of the v- reasons and why people are doing it, why why venues are choosing to do it. I get it. I understand those, and I will talk about them in a few minutes. So before I have a bunch of artists and uh, DIY venue owners who who these I mean this is these are sort of the places that I tour. You know, I don't I don't tour big theaters or big venues like that. I I tour smaller rooms. I, I tour black box theaters and underground spaces, house shows, things of that sort. Uh, and I I do understand why some of some people choose to do it or or not even choose to do it, but rather have to do it right is is sort of the way that it plays out is they 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 have to do it in order to sustain themselves in order to put food on their family's table uh which is a a incredibly unfair thing um to do especially in a pandemic you you shouldn't have to choose between feeding your family uh and and safety that is uh, an unfair decision to make. So I do understand those things, and I am going to talk about uh, ab- ab- those things in, in a minute here. But um, here's here's part of the reason why it makes me nervous more than anything. Uh, the reason why I disagree with doing live, in, especially indoor shows. I'll say specifically indoor shows. Um, right now, uh, I we're about to hit wave two. I think that's going to happen. Uh, inevitably. So I think this is perpetuating it. And we already have so many things perpetuating wave two. Um, you know, we've got these Trump rallies with no masks. We've got like Pennsylvania is going to 50% capacity. States like Florida have just been operating like we're not in a pandemic. Um, you know, and more of these restaurants and bars and things of that sort are opening up. And that plays into people's psychology because then they think like nothing's wrong. Right. So when we see the number of cases going down, that's a very good thing. It's a positive thing. Uh, confirmed cases go down. More people start getting tested. The number of deaths start going down. That doesn't mean that we should, we should, you know, we should, uh, oh, uh, you know, just say, oh, well, uh, the cases are going down, the numbers are going down, let's just say fuck it all. And go back to the way things were. That just means that we need to stay the course so that the numbers continue to go down. You know, that's that's just the way things work. That's the logical way of doing this. And, yeah, we had, like, these car shows and all this crazy shit over the summer, and it just made the numbers go up. Not good, guys. That's not good. Um, it makes me nervous because of that. It makes me nervous that I don't want comedy and live entertainment and you know these concerts and all this other stuff to be the cause of something like that. It just it it, it you know I was talking to my a friend about this uh, uh, you know because I had a birthday show planned at one of our our venues here in, in Pittsburgh. And it was still on their calendar because, again, it's like everything is so uncertain. No one really has an answer for shit. And uh, when they were starting to lift some of the restrictions in Pennsylvania, they said, well, you know, maybe we can try doing some live events with social distancing and masks and, um, you know, uh, XYZ safety protocols. And they were like, they were going to talk to me about it, but there was a a bit of a tragedy and... uh, you know, there was sort of a moot point. But I did think about that. I did think about, you know, well, would I do something like that? Would, would, would I be comfortable with doing a show at an indoor venue? And really right now, in the next few months especially, it boils down to no. 
I don't think I would be comfortable with it. Uh, not just for this, you know, my safety or the safety of other performers and so on and so forth, but, you know, if the if they come if somebody comes out to a show and they go well let's make a night of it and you know we'll go we'll go get a drink and we'll go get some appetizers and we'll go to this place or that place before we go to the show and then they come to the show and then somebody catches it it's just i don't i don't that's not something i can bear on my conscience i can't i can't have people getting sick on my watch i can't have people getting sick because they came out to see my show um it's part of the reason why I stick to the virtual ones, right? Is is yes, it's different. Yes, it's it's it, it has a different vibe and all that. But but we can make it work. You can make that sort of stuff work. I think clubs can also make that sort of stuff work. Uh, I've seen some venues do their do their regular events over over virtual, over either streaming on Facebook or doing it through Zoom or or, or something along those lines, and. You know, the venues that are doing it, they're going so, they have to go so above and beyond in terms of safety and stuff. You know, they have to have their uh, staff wear masks. They have to sometimes have the audience wearing masks. They're switching out mics per performer. They're sanitizing everything. They have to keep everything six feet apart. Um, you know, they're, they're set, the logistics and um, selling tickets are, are a, can be a little bit more challenging and difficult. Um, if you're someone that comes alone to see concerts and stuff, it's going to be a little bit difficult, you know, because the priority is going to be for family groups and couples and stuff. Um, uh, rotating glassware, uh, they're doing hyper cleaning. So it becomes a lot. And you're at 50% capacity, so then the question ends up becoming, um, do you charge more? Do you charge more? A lot of places I'm seeing are not because they're independent venues and they want people to come and afford a, a, a night out for uh, you know a, a, good, a good price. Um, so you look, at, uh, you look at something like a Teehees Comedy Club in Des Moines, Iowa, which is, I know they've been running shows and they've been going above and beyond with the, the way that they're, they're handling all of the safety stuff by rotating the glassware and the social distancing and all that. They're doing between 10 to 30 bucks per uh, ticket. And, and the 30 bucks is like, that's like a package deal. You, you purchase a table. So if you know you're coming with a group of four, you purchase that table. And you have something like the uh, Comedy Attic in Bloomington, uh, and that's a comedy club. I don't perform particularly at comedy clubs, but, you know, for the sake of the argument, it is part of, <coughs> excuse me, my part of the um, <coughs> world that, that I operate in, <coughs> you know, <coughs> comedy club, sorry, um, jacket's got some cat hair on it uh, but uh, they're doing like a zoom version of their show they're having the traveling performer come in and they're doing like a zoom version of their show as well as um, in person but wait if you're in person you have to wear a mask you're doing a temperature check you know they're very they're being very strict about like what uh, how how people can get in, and then they'll stream it over Zoom, and you get a purchase ticket for that. But I don't know if they're how the comedian would hear if the people on Zoom are are laughing or they're not laughing. And yeah, it, it, I think that it makes it a it's slight bit more complicated in that regard. But I mean, these are all additional costs that these comp these uh, businesses now have to bear on themselves. To me, doing the touring thing is a little bit more socially irresponsible because of how the states are dealing with it like the states are dealing with it differently like each like Iowa might have a different rule than Wisconsin and uh, Maryland is going to be different than Pennsylvania and so now it's like you're bringing those sort of and you know I don't know how much some of these comics are going to be social distancing and neither does the club and so it poses some additional risks and on top of that now you know, some of these comedy clubs are going to be bringing in people from L.A. and New York, and that means they're going to have to fly, and that's a whole big thing. And 
like flights right now super risky I would not want to do something like that it makes me nervous so that's part of the reason why I look at indoor events like that and I'm like "Eh, I think we can wait I think we can wait I was reading a paste article I you know and I wrote a big thing on my website about this a couple months ago about when I think we'll see live events and and touring performers across the country again um, and I really thought, it, you know, my, my, my optimistic expectation is, you know, spring of next year, maybe around, maybe around February, March, um, you know, it, it, based on the way things, things go, but I'm, I'm, pr- it's probably going to be later. It's probably going to be later if I'm being very honest about it. And, um, look at that, an electric car with a Trump Pence sign. That's weird. Uh, sorry, that's just strange. But, uh, you know, I, I would not feel comfortable going state to state. I would not be comfortable, you know, and now the, the venues might have to maybe cover the cost of the flight in the hotel, but I, I, most likely they're not, you know, like independent venues can't afford to put somebody up in a hotel or pay for their flight or anything like that. And airlines aren't partnering with fucking independent comedy clubs or independent rock clubs to to help out their artists like hell no they're trying to turn a buck they're trying to keep their whole thing going and and you know so it it poses some additional risks that i think uh right now not particularly worth it now again 100 percent understand it because if these venues don't open their doors and sell their tickets and sell their alcohol and sell their food and possibly merch if they have merch for sale, um, and, and and so on and so forth, there will no longer be independent venues. And I know that. I know that. Because I talked to somebody earlier this week, uh, or, or rather last week, uh, I released a podcast of a conversation I had last month with Jordan Grobe from the National Independent Venue Association, NEVA. Uh, and we talked about why it's important to save independent venues and why independent venues are actually so important. And uh, Congress right now is willfully killing independent venues by not putting um, measures out there to help independent venues, to help small businesses across the country. So they're willfully uh, killing small businesses, you know. They didn't come out with a new stimulus plan. They just went on vacation, and now they're back under the guise of, well, the post office and also stimulus. And, you know, one of the things that we talked about in this interview is, well, economics seem to be very important to these people. Art, art, not really. You know, I I don't think people like Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi really give a shit about good art. Um, Ted Cruz, Klobuchar, they don't care about good art. Because good art, really good art, is interesting, it's weird, and it's subversive. And it challenges the status quo. It challenges the norms that we see in our society. That's good art. Uh, And they're not interested in that kind of shit. They're just not. They don't give a fuck. It challenges them. It challenges the way they, they operate in their world. But economics, they do care about. Economics is something that they can get behind because those are the values that they, you know, they're championing the capitalism. Capitalism is the best. We need the economics. Choose the economics over the safety. That's what we've seen all throughout this pandemic. So, you know, the the way that Neva posed it was, look, for every $1 that is spent at a venue for a show, at an independent venue for any kind of show, um, about $12 is circulated throughout that community. And if you really think about it, if somebody comes out to see a Chris Mohan show and they come to a, a kitschy, weird little venue and they spent $10 to come see that, they might go, well, you know what, let's go and make a night of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go and make a night of it. Um, let's, let's go get some dinner. We'll get some coffee. Uh, maybe a little dessert, and then we'll go to the venue. We'll get, we'll have a drink or two there, and then we'll if if it's a really good show, then we'll go and uh, go to that bar down the street from the venue, and and buy some alcohol there. And you know, 
if they're making a night of it, they might end up spending an additional 100 to 150 dollars. All in that, all in that one area, and that's a that's that's a 12 to one ratio. That's per person. So independent venues, in that regard, really bring millions and billions of dollars into into communities. And really what this shows, what this argument shows, is who runs the economy. It's not Wall Street or the stock exchange. It's not rich people. It's not billionaires. It's us. We run it. Independent venues aren't, uh, you know, sponsored by Apple or Amazon or what have you. They're, they are independent venues. Yeah. They're standalones. So Congress was supposed to pass this bill, but, I mean, even the economic argument really shows you, like, how independent the people really are and how the people are creating a sense of community and how we are keeping the communities alive. Um, you know, so... And, 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 again, that's part of the reason why. There's no, there's no stimulus. There's no uh, grant or anything for small businesses it's a, it's a, it's a complete crapshoot for them so i do get why some of these places are running indoor shows with all of the safety measures and sometimes they're not running it with safety measures but the ones even that are running with i get it i get it i understand it i just don't feel comfortable with it um i i think it's it's again it's that sophie's choice of safety over economy safety over financial stability and right now, Congress can pass the bills that Neva has put out there, the, Staver, sa- the Save Our Stages bill um, and the Restart bill. Uh, these bills will help independent venues and small businesses stay afloat. Maybe they can run their resources in a different direction, right? Purchase some streaming equipment. Figure out how to do that Zoom show on their stage. <clears throat> sorry, excuse, I'm sorry I'm coughing. This is the last bit of phlegmy phlegm that's in my system with all of the weather changes. Um, but, you know, that that is... I get it. And Congress can pass this. If they can give $5 trillion to the banks with no questions asked, why can't they do that for the small business communities? They're willfully choosing not to. Now, I did get an email a um, couple months, a couple, a couple days ago, a couple months ago, what the fuck, a couple days ago uh, from Neva talking about the HEROES Act that's been uh, reproposed um, and the stimulus plan. And a lot of it is the same, right? They're $1,200. It's, not, it's a stopgap measure. $1,200 to the American people. They're going to do 600 bucks a week in unemployment insurance. Uh, again, those two, unless you're going to fix the loopholes, which left uh, hundreds and thousands of Americans um, that were ineligible to get the uh, stimulus bill or stimulus uh, money or the unemployment money, then, um, <clears throat> you know, this is still nothing to drop in the bucket, to drop in the bucket, to stop get measure for um, two or three weeks at best. It's really it. Uh you know, but they want to spend four hundred and thirty-six billion in uh, in in the states. They want to allocate that money to the states. Uh, Twenty-eight billion in contact tracing and and uh, testing. Great, awesome. Uh, and the big one is bigger support for small businesses by expanding the Paycheck Protection Program, which was something that Neva wanted to do. And again, I don't know if the Paycheck Protection Program is really all that great. It seems like another stopgap measure. You know, you're giving them the money to pay their employees rather than just giving the money directly to the employees. Then then the business has to make a, a decision of like, well, we got this PPE and it's enough to either keep our staff paid for three weeks or keep the lights on and pay the rent for another month and a half. <coughs> so... It really makes things... Again, it's, it's just putting a Sophie's Choice out there. 
And what this is going to do if these venues shut down, and we've already seen a bunch of venues shut down. Great Scott in Boston is one of them. Rex Theater in Pittsburgh is another one. We might, we're might we going to see a ton of, ton more. Um, and those aren't the only two. There's a bunch of all across the country. Um, people are going to be out of work. People are going to lose their homes because they've lost their only means of income. <clears throat> The community is going to lose a large amount of revenue. So it's important. It's important to keep these venues alive. Uh, for the sake of safety and for the sake of community and for the sake of economics. Now Germany is, is doing something where they're, where they're pumping about a billion euros into their arts communities. right? So America, questionable on whether they want to help art. Germany, let's do this. Let's help art. And uh, they're spending a bunch of money, like they're spending about fifty-six million dollars in in the in uh, grassroots venues, like the independent venues that we're talking about here. Uh, about one hundred and thirty-five million dollars into the film industry. Um, a little bit more than one one sixty-nine about the theater and dance community. Um, they're going to spend about twenty billion in, or twenty, uh, sorry, twenty million in radio broadcasting, and then <clears throat> another thirty-two million in galleries and, and sociocultural events, because they realize that art is important. They realize that the, 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 there is value in art and music and comedy. It gets you to think. It's critical thinking. It improves those skills to understand humor to understand music, to connect with emotionality, to look at a painting and, and feel something and talk about those feelings. Those are all good things. Here in America, they're like, no, let's shut all that shit down. How do we create more compliant citizenship? That's what they want. And art teaches you how to subvert that because it challenges the status quo. And these Congress members are pro-status quo. <clears throat> So, you know, I, I would say if you have a local venue around, look, and outdoor events are completely different. They're very dependent on the weather. With things kind of cooling down, at, you know, I'm up north, so you know, things are starting to kind of cool down. The weather is very finicky, and so you, you have that to deal with. And if it's over the summertime, well, then you have the heat to deal with, and hopefully you can provide people with waters and there, there's a lot of challenges to doing an outdoor show, though it is better. Um, there, there is, there are venues that I've seen doing outdoor shows, being socially responsible with it, spreading people out. Um, but it's, but there are, there are some challenges to it, uh, all around: music, comedy, poetry, whatever your, whatever your, um, your art is. But we should be saving these venues, is my point. If Congress would have done something about it immediately, we would have seen less venues that needed to be opened up um, to pay their bills, to do stand-up, to call... You know, I mean, I see these venues. They're, they're calling people from other states, you know? Like, they're doing more regional showcases, for, you know, and I'm speaking specifically in terms of comedy now. Um, and there, but even then, it's like regional. If you're in Milwaukee, to Chicago is like two hours away, and uh, you know the rules for Illinois are different than the rules for Wisconsin. Like, are you gonna suggest that these people fucking quarantine themselves for two weeks once they get back to Chicago? I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right to me. It doesn't feel right. But if Congress would have done something and bailed them out, they wouldn't have the need to do something like that. They could f focus their energy on different means. They could innovate. They could invest in some technology. It's changing. The landscape is changing. When we come out of this COVID world, the entertainment landscape is going to be very different. There's going to be a lot of different options. And it's going to be, uh, and for the time being, I think it's going to be very difficult to get people out of the house. Um, to come see a thing, to know that there is worth and value in coming to see a live event. So uh, I hope it doesn't come. I, I hope that venues do get saved. 
I, 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 you know, and I hope that the venues that have been lost get some kind of uh, uh, compensation for it. That's my hope. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure you like it. Please make sure you share it. And please make sure you are subscribed to this channel, whether you're watching this on the YouTubes, whether you're watching this on Facebook or uh, or Rockfin, which is the cryptocurrency blockchain platform. It's ad-free. And make sure that content creators get paid for the content that they want to make. It's completely uncensored. Whether you're on any of these channels, make sure that you are subscribed and following me for uh, all new video updates. There are uh, videos uh, put up on this channel on a weekly basis, anywhere from four to six videos every single week. Uh, they include uh, news commentary. They include sociopolitical com comedy commentary, uh, rants, uh, current event stuff, interviews, stand-up comedy clips, there's a ton of stuff that's available on this channel. Uh, and if you want to come see one of my live virtual stand-up comedy shows called the Citizen Revolution Live Virtual Stand-Up Comedy Show, you can grab tickets directly off my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, while you're there, you can also become a sustaining member to get free tickets to these shows uh, uh, and a bunch of cool other uh, bonus stand-up comedy clips uh, while you're at it. And uh, you, or you can make a one-time donation as well uh, if, if that is something that, that you would like to do, if the sustaining membership is something that you can do. I know we're in tough times right now, uh, but if you can, that'd be awesome. If not, that's cool too. But the big thing to do is make sure that you are liking it, you are sharing this, and you are subscribed to the channel. Till next time, thank you so much, and we'll see you on the road.